Welcome to This Week from Blue Mountain Broadcasting. I'm your host, Linnell Ellis, President of Blue Mountain Broadcasting Association and Executive Director. And I am just delighted that you've tuned in today because we have a report about our fall fundraiser. In fact, you're probably looking at the backdrop behind me and saying, that looks like the fundraiser. That does not look like the This Week show because we decided to just keep this set up for one episode of the This Week show here. And you probably would love to know what the total was at the end of what right now as I'm recording this is last evening. But I'm gonna make you wait just a moment because I'd really like our content delivery manager, Lowell, to give you that number. So he's gonna be my guest today on the show, so just stay tuned because that's coming up in just a bit right after our devotional thought. And we'll begin with that. Right now, here at Blue Mountain Broadcasting Association, we are really in a, a feeling, a mode of praise and thanksgiving. We are feeling so much gratitude because of the way that God has blessed over this past weekend, of course with the fundraiser, but also just with the wonderful content that we've been able to experience with D. Casper being here to speak in person and during our fundraiser and also with the beautiful music we experienced during that in-person event and also during our fundraiser from Rejoice Trio and from the other groups that we were able to present during that fundraiser. So it's just really a high spiritual time for us. We're, we're thanking God for his many gifts and his many blessings. And it really occurred to me that all, all of the good that has happened over the past weekend and the past several days is all coming directly from God. You remember James 1, 17, that verse. Whenever good things are happening in my life, I always remember this verse. Every good and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Every good and perfect gift is from above. And if you really dig into that theologically, that means anytime you see anything good, happening around you in the world, that's from God. Every good and perfect gift. There, there are sometimes even people who don't know God or at least don't know him in the same way that you do, who have good things that come through their lives and those are gifts from God as well. Every good and perfect gift is from above. And so knowing that all of these things come from God, we've spent some time over the past few days saying thank you to you who are viewers. Thank you to those who have been donating and who gave during our fall fundraiser. And really though, as we thank you and as we thank our volunteers and everyone who's participated and helped, that thanks extends beyond those people and goes on up to God. The ultimate thanks belongs to him because he is the one who has provided every good and every perfect gift. So our gratitude to him. Last night as we wrapped up our fundraiser, we all of the volunteers who were here at that point, we gathered together and we sang the doxology, praise God from whom all blessings flow. It's the same idea, the same theme, all good blessings coming from God. This also made me think of one of my favorite Psalms. And I know several months back, I talked with you about some of the best Psalms, according to me. I mean, everybody could have their top five, right? And we talked about my top five, and this is one of those. But whenever, also whenever I have this heart full of praise and gratitude, I think of this Psalm. It's Psalm 103. It's such a wonderful Psalm. It talks about all of the ways of, uh, it's God's character, like who God is and who I am. It gets everything in perspective and what God's done for me and why he's worthy of so much praise. And as we, as we are contemplating still the messages that D. Casper brought to us about Christ's sacrifice for us, the faith of Jesus, his deep love, God's deep love for us and his forgiveness and how all of those things work together, they seem centered in a Psalm like this one, Psalm 103 that really, in one psalm, explains the whole situation of God and man and how we're interconnected and how much he cares for us. So let's just take a moment to read through Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives, all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, 
who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. As a flower of the field, he flourishes, for the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those who remember his commandments to do them. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. Welcome back. Joining me now is one of our favorite people at Blue Mountain Broadcasting Association, Lowell Mann, who's our content delivery manager. And Lowell, it is great to have you on the show today. Happy to be back. And people don't want me to introduce you. They just want to know what, what was, was the total. The <laughs> yeah, so uh, I guess we could start there. The total for our fundraiser, we ended at just about $42,000. 42000 What a which, blessing. Which, as we look at over the last couple of years, I mean, it's not as much as we had last year at this time. But if you look at... The previous years the previous before, like 2019, 18. Yeah, yeah, we're right in the same ballpark as where we usually end. So we're, we're super thrilled. Yeah, we're really, really happy for it. And so grateful to you because uh, you're the ones who were calling in and giving and, and donating to the station. And I know, you know, in addition to the people that gave right now during the fundraiser, there's some who are planning to give through the Valley Giving Guide yet Correct. still coming yep. up between November 29 and the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So we're looking forward to that because yeah, that's going to be increased. Yeah. And it's, it's amazing, there was a lot of people that pledged during the fundraiser, but they're gonna give during the Valley Giving Guide. And so what that means is 42,000 is actually gonna bump up a little bit. For it all is, those because what are they estimating, 20% increase? They, yeah, they're estimating 20% this year. So think about it, what a huge thing this is, that, that this organization, Blue Mountain Community Foundation, uh, would gather together those funds for nonprofits and actually share 20% increase on whatever is donated. It's just a, a big to, to gift. The, to the entire community. Yeah, all of the nonprofits have that yeah. opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we're so glad we can be a part of it for mm -hmm. sure. Absolutely. So in other words, even if you didn't tune in during the fundraiser and you didn't give a gift then and you and you might be saying to yourself, oh, I missed that. I was watching election coverage or whatever else you, know, was, you were busy with, with during that time. It's not too late. Um, certainly mm -hmm. still a good chance to yeah to participate and be a part of this end of the year giving for Blue Mountain Television. Mm -hmm. So Lowell, we, we kind of said to each other that it would be fun to recap with our viewers some of the 
the the enjoyment of this past weekend. Um, yeah. I think you and I are feeling pretty exhausted. Actually, we we we're coming with the last bit of energy we have here for this show because yeah. there there have been nine. Is it yeah, nine, nine events? events in five days? Yes. So so we're, we're a little tired. A little it was tired, all good. Yes, though. it was. So let's start with Friday night. All right. So this is November four. November four. We had. Um, an event at Wava Auditorium. And we brought in a special speaker, D. Casper. Yes. And he presented on righteousness by faith throughout the weekend. And so Friday night, he looked at the two covenants, the old covenant and the new covenant. Sabbath morning, he looked at the faith of Jesus that's mentioned in Revelation chapter 14. Yes. Here are those of the saints that keep the, page, or the faith of, of Jesus. Jesus. Yes. So what is that? What does that look like? And so that was what he did there. And then uh, Sabbath afternoon in our concert slash presentation, presentation yeah. he looked at the forgiveness of Jesus. And there's, yes. two, there's two terms that he, and I can't even... Greek terms for forgiveness that he looked yeah, at. Yeah, I don't. I remember that there were two, but I don't. Yeah. I couldn't say them. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I think it, us just describing what his topics were uh, feels like it can't even scratch the surface yeah, of what the experience was like. Talk to somebody who was there. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, especially a Sabbath morning during the church service, there was hardly a dry eye because um, the presentation was just really powerful about Christ's and you know sacrifice. What was for else us. was really interesting. The adult Sabbath school lesson for. What the church is studying, the, the world church is studying, fit his topic. Right on. It was like dead on. It was like we were discussing some of the very things. It was like part things. one and then part two. <laughs> it's what it felt like. It was just <laughs> incredible. I don't think it was a divine intervention. There's no yes. way, you know, any other way around it. So really right now there's about 150 special people in this community who were there mm -hmm. and know exactly what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And um, if you weren't there, which certainly likely to be the case. Um, we, we just sort of as a contingency thought, even though this was an in-person event, we said, let's set up one camera and record it. Mm -hmm. So we did, yes. so uh, the opportunity exists to, to see these fantastic presentations. Although we're exhausted from yeah, these so nine events. Yeah, so give us a few days, so Give please. us a little bit. Um, I will be working on editing those and we'll get all three of his pre presentations up on YouTube. YouTube hopefully by the end of November. It'll yes. take a little bit because yes. I want to put all of his, he had slides and presentations. Yes, you want to put those into it. I want to put those into it. So that's going to take a little bit of post-production time. It will, but we're, we're so happy that we at least have it, you know, yes. we can share with people. Mm -hmm. It's not really broadcast quality, so we, we won't broadcast the episodes, but they'll be on our YouTube, so easily accessible. Yeah, easily accessible. And a lot of people, I just want to hear that again. Oh, yeah. And so even those I want to hear it again. See, even those that were there, still still want to hear. Uh, I, of course we were excited about having Dee come and we chose him as a speaker to come. He also had some availability which worked out fantastic for us. Mm -hmm. I have to say it exceeded our expectations. His presentations were so scriptural, they were so beautiful, they were really important messages mm -hmm. for helping us understand how much God really loves us and how that works mm -hmm. and what God does for us and in us. And uh, we, you know, we just don't need to be, we don't need to be worried about whether we're gonna be good enough for him and for his kingdom. We just need to give ourselves to him. Yeah. And Amen. And it was just an incredible presentation. And we would, it, it wouldn't be right if we didn't say we also love the music. Yeah, the music was, Fantastic. It was. We had Rejoice Trio. We, yeah, we brought in Rejoice Trio, which was kind of a reunion concert because they have not been together for quite some time. Yeah, over a year. Over a year, and they invited your daughter Lauren to yes. sing with them. And that, that was such was, a privilege for her. And that was a special, yeah, special for her and for them and for the treat for the audience because it was those those two songs that she did were they were beautiful they, they were very beautiful and they fit so well with each of the presentations that had been given and that was planned to uh, some extent yeah. one of them was planned the other one wasn't and yet it fits so gr great too yeah. so the, 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 the Lord works in mysterious ways absolutely but Friday night we also had uh, Rogers school yes. that was one of my favorite things actually their praise team yeah so they had a praise team that did the music which was so special cute. yeah and then they did a quartet yes i thought it was going to be a double quartet but i think it was just a, yes, a regular with playing beat out my vision mm -hmm. yeah so th that was special to to hear from them we had the walla orchestra 
on Sabbath morning. On Sabbath yep. morning after Sabbath school and then in church and then also Wava praise team. Yes, did led us in our, our songs, songs for Sabbath school. For Sabbath school, and mm -hmm. so that was that was really special. It was. It was great to have our own community members, you know, being a part of it. And mm -hmm. well, we had a special speaker and a special group come in, but to have our own participating yeah. was really fun. It was really fun, and then we had lunch. Yes, <laughs> we we tried to see how many people we can fit in the Walula facility. Apparently. And we got <laughs> quite a few in there. Did. It's did not a, really a huge building, actually. I mean, it used to be a church, but it's it's not a huge building. It's not a huge building, and I think it was pretty much standing room only oh, yeah. in that fellowship hall Definitely. area. Um, the the line for the food went way down the hall and, and back. around. It was a yeah. snaking line. Thankfully, people were really patient and oh having they were having such a great time visiting with each other. At, that's what I observed anyway, mm, yeah. that it, we didn't even notice that, that it, it took a little while to get to food. Yeah. And Blue Mountain Television provided all the spaghetti. Mm -hmm. So thank you to those who, and you know who you are, <laughs> who prepared all that spaghetti. Mm -hmm. So yes, so that was there. And then people potlucked in, they brought in, we had so many salads and lots of bread and and we had desserts. We had desserts a coming out of our ears desserts. it felt like. <laughs> but it was it was great, it was special. It was hard to find a place to park, but we yes. had about 120 people at that facility. Yes. And I don't know how many more people we could have crammed in there. It was <laughs> pretty I was full. thinking next time we have a pollock there, we better make sure it's in the spring or something and we can spill out into the but, outdoors um, <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah, that would be that yep. would be great. So that was the weekend yes, there. And that then was the Sabbath Trio part had of the their a concert in the afternoon, which yes. was special too. Yes. For sure, that was kind of a highlight for me. Yeah, so that was the Wava Auditorium come out yes. event. Yes, come in person. Come you in know, person. we're really thinking, thinking of it as a way for Blue Mountain Television to just give a gift to our community, especially as we're coming out of COVID and we've kind of been more isolated, to just have this event that we could share with our community, bring in a special speaker, bring in some special musicians, and just say, come, enjoy mm -hmm. a gift from us. And those that attended were blessed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we transitioned into Sunday. We have our annual constituency meeting, the bylaws state we have to meet. First, <laughs> First Sunday, Sunday of November. So we had that in the morning. And I think that went exceptionally well too. It we did. had such a good group of constituents who came. They were, um, they all were just smiling as they looked up at us when we were presenting and looking mm -hmm. really positive yeah. about what we were sharing. So that's fun. Yeah, and so the, the, the goal is that of that is to share with the constituents what's going on and then they take that back to their churches and kind of share what's happening at Blue Mountain Television. You know, th this is a chance for us to kind of explain to people how Blue Mountain Television happens from work. the governmental level. Mm -hmm. uh, some people have gotten the impression that maybe it's a ministry of one of the churches in the valley or a couple of the churches in the valley. And it really is a lot bigger than that. We have 13 churches that uh, are members and owners in a sense really of the organization and they send their delegates every year to say yes or no, we're happy with the direction that the, the ministry's going and mm -hmm. usually they're happy. Yeah. This year Years they were happy. This year they were happy. That was yeah. good. And they're the ones that elect the officers of the board as yes, well. Yes, so we had a couple of those elections that mm -hmm. today, I mean uh, Sunday. Yeah. And um, just did the business of the organization, looked at the finances and those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And then Sunday afternoon, we had retired, Adventist retired workers. That's a great group. They, have, yeah. they look like they have a lot of fun together. Yeah, it certainly does. And uh, so we were able to present what Blue Mountain Television is doing. Mm -hmm. Some of the same stuff we did in the morning, we were able to present with that. Yes, that in the group, afternoon. In that afternoon. And then... Uh, they were so receptive too, so that was great. It's always good to be with, a, with an organization that's excited and happy about what you're doing. And we were mm -hmm. able to tell them about the Valley Giving Guide and mm -hmm. share yeah. some of the... We really, both at the constituency meeting and at the Adventist Retired Workers, we were really able to share some of the vision for the future, the projects we're working on, able to show some pictures, um, explain mm -hmm. some of that. Yeah. And uh, so I think that was energizing for us and for them as well. Yeah. And then Sunday evening, 
we transition straight <laughs> into our because fundraiser. Because we weren't tired at all by then. Yeah, I know. I talked with uh, Carmen, our executive assistant, and she was just wiped out before we even began with our fundraiser. Yes. Because of these other events that took so much energy. And she had a huge role in preparing for those, especially those yeah. live events mm -hmm. in, yeah. in person. Yes. I mean, from, from, from my standpoint and my job aspect, those events weren't as... Intensive, intense for you. Intense for me. Yeah. Getting uh, the PowerPoints and a few things ready. Sure. A little bit. But when we transition into the fundraiser, that's yeah. when things really For you, kick on off your side, yes. Yeah. But, but Carmen's also... <laughs> very busy. Very dialed the telephone, the volunteers, yeah. the food. Yes. So if you were with us the last uh, couple Three evenings... Three nights, yeah. Yeah. We're recording this on a Wednesday, and so... We had Sunday, Sunday Monday, Monday, and, and Tuesday. Tuesday. And we were able to share the mission of Blue Mountain Television, yes. the impact on the next night, and some yes. of the things that we're looking forward to. Yes. And, and it was just a great opportunity to share those things. And also, of course, because it was a fundraiser, people were calling in. Mm -hmm. And we like that interactivity. That That's one of the highlights for us, is getting to hear back from people. We like to hear from a lot more people than we hear from, actually, during the fundraisers. We do get calls. We'd love for it to be broader and more people calling, even if they're calling with small gifts. We'd love to see more of that happening. But it, it was a great time. And D. Casper got stay. to stay. Yes, and he talked on the subject of mental health. Yes. Throughout really all Really relevant. Evenings. Yeah, really relevant. And I really appreciated those messages just as much as the ones at the Wawa Auditorium. They, were, they felt like a, a natural um, progression of ideas, really, from mm -hmm. those beautiful biblical themes he shared and, and then continuing on with those about how that's practical in our lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really good. So uh, it's not always that we get to have a special speaker stay by live and in person for all of the days of our fundraiser, and he was able to do that. And so it was a treat, really great. It really was. Now we have to come back to reality, Lowell. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll, it'll be our regular daily work now, which is pretty exciting. Yeah. So that's okay. But because um, now we're at the end, or we're in the middle of the week, as but I, I have to edit this. So by the time they're, the viewers are watching this, it'll, it'll be, be the edited. end of the week. It'll be the end yeah. of the week, and all of the normal stuff. We got to get everything prepped for the weekend and schedules. And yes. And uh, when we get to the station news segment, um, I will share a little bit more about some things that are coming up. Because just because of this huge weekend and beginning of the week uh, for Blue Mountain Television is over doesn't mean that good things, things are over. Correct. We've got a lot of good stuff coming up as we head into the holiday season, etc. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, this would probably be a good time for me to just say, I can't tell what time cues he's trying to give me, but I'm just, <laughs> I'm just gonna wrap it up. Um, but I, I just uh, want to thank you, Lowell, for the tremendous amount of work that you put into this. I also want to say thank you to Elaine Henshaw, our creative and development director who put also gargantuan effort into these last bits we've had, Carmen Kearns and uh, Zach Swaina and all of our technical volunteers and all of the rest of the volunteers. We, we this morning signed 47 thank you cards to people who volunteered their time over the past few Actually, days. Actually, I think it was 49 because we added two more. There you go, 49. <laughs> so uh, that just tells you that there are a lot of really cool people living here in our community who wanted to be part of this and who helped, and we appreciate every one of them mm -hmm. a lot. Yes. So thank you. Yeah. And thank you to you for, for watching, and stay tuned now because I'll be right back with Station News. Time now for station news. First, I want to let you know that Secret Life of the Desert is back. We had a one-week hiatus from the show while we were doing our fundraiser, but you can catch it again on Blue Mountain Television this Sunday night at 7 p.m. for a brand new episode. And this episode is called Ringgold. So you just have to tune in to find out what that means and what it's all about. So brand new episode. So proud of that show. So happy to be able to bring it to you. And uh, you need to follow through through the rest of the season. And also, you need to know that we have not forgotten about Christmas here at Blue Mountain Broadcasting. We, in fact, we're pretty excited because we've got some wonderful Christmas programs that are coming up in our local churches, and we are going to capture those 
uh, on video and be able to share them with you. So once again, we'll have the very popular University Church Christmas presentation. So we'll have that on Blue Mountain Television. We will also have the program provided at the Village Seventh Day Adventist Church. So there's two churches in our valley that have cameras set up and it's, it's pretty easy to get things recorded there and we're really grateful for that. But here's a third one. State Line Church also has some wonderful cameras at their facility and they are going to be bringing in a special group and I'm gonna forget the name of the high school. Um, Castle, Valley. Castle Valley, I just got a cue from off camera. So Castle Valley um, High School and uh, their director is the same director that used to be at Fountain View and just helps make some beautiful music with these young musicians. They're gonna be giving a concert at the State Line Seventh Day Adventist Church and so the group there, the wonderful volunteers there are gonna also be able to record this concert. So that's three we know of for sure, brand new concerts that are gonna be coming to you for Christmas from three of our local area churches and uh, we couldn't be more delighted. So we don't have the exact schedule about when those will air yet, but stay tuned to this show, also our website uh, and our social media because we'll have uh, information about when you can watch those. Uh, also, I wanted to tell you a little update about our facility at Wallula. You know, we, we have been making progress as quickly as we can there, and today we got the happy surprise that College Place Heating and Air Conditioning is there doing the duct work that needs to be done in the facility before we can finish out the rooms that have already been framed in. So the executive assistance office, the control room for the studio, the audio room, and a storage room. All of those rooms, the next step that needed to happen after the framing in of those rooms was for this ducting to be done and then after that we can do electrical. And they're there, they're doing it right now. In fact, uh, Lola and I, before coming to record this program today, were at the facility watching them as they were working there. So um, pretty exciting news for us. We're, we're delighted because um, they have been so generous in helping us with this portion of what we need for construction. So moving forward, moving forward faster than we thought was going to happen, so that's always delightful. Also, if you're on our mailing list, you can be expecting to receive a letter from us pretty soon, a year-end letter, talking about some of the needs we have here at the end of the year to keep this ministry strong, to move it forward into our very exciting 2013. If you were watching the fundraiser last night, you heard Lowell say several times that he's so excited about 2023. Did I just say 13? I think I did. 2023, he's so excited about that because there is just a lot happening and we can see so much in programming, in facility, in uh, developing an app, developing who we are as Blue Mountain Broadcasting as we move forward into really a new era. Technically kind of a new era, content-wise, hopefully a more exciting era. So um, those are some of the things that are happening. We're really looking forward to the new year and looking forward to a strong close to this year as you support the ministry here at Blue Mountain Broadcasting Association. Uh, once again, I want to thank you for what you do. Thank you for watching this show, for tuning in, for being a part of it, for telling others about the station. We appreciate that, and I will see you next time.